Hey y'all, here I am again, Sandy Peterson. This time wearing another awesome mask from our uh, our line on redbubble.com. This is the, uh, of course, the uh, Hastur Rising mask. Um, I didn't show off the sleeper mask last time, so I'll do that now. Cool sleeper mask. If any asks you what it is, just tell it that you don't get enough rest at night. We even have the obscure ones, like here's Ubo Sathla. You know, so they're all there. We even have some from the God's War and from uh, Hyperspace, so uh, check it out. <clears throat> We're going to watch this clip for a little while. <laughs> this is a scene from the movie Deep Red, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time from the 1970s. I mean, it is from the 1970s. It's one of my favorite horror movies, whether or not it's from the 70s. It's just awesome. If you're interested in it, please, please get the newer versions that are full screen. For a long time, we only had pan and scan versions in America. And Dario Argento, the director of Deep Red, uses every inch of the view. I mean, this guy standing on this side of the screen, this side, they're talking over something in the middle. Pan and scan hurts this picture more than most pictures. Um, now, Deep Red is a giallo. So we're going to talk about what this means. In an earlier talk about Mario Bava, which there's a link here to it, I talk about the fact that Mario Bava invented the giallos, and I talked a little bit about giallos. I'm going to talk more about giallos now. I'll just mention in passing, though it's not important, that giallo means yellow in Italian. There's various explanations of why this is. Doesn't really matter. Giallo in English doesn't mean yellow. It means this kind, kind of movie. movie. But let's talk about slasher movies first. I'm going to talk about slasher movies versus giallos. Okay, because they they aren't confused exactly, not by giallo fans, but but there's a there's interesting comparison to make. Now, a lot of people sneer at slasher movies. Okay, they go, oh, they're just gore, they're just dumb. There's there are some good slasher movies. There's Black Christmas, Nightmare on Elm Street, the last horror film, but there are many, many terrible slashers. One of the most common things you'll hear from a horror fan is, I like horror, but not slasher movies. So why are slashers so negative? What's wrong with this genre? Well, one reason is that slashers focus on gore. And some people like gore is icky, right? It's not, it doesn't set up an interesting atmosphere. Well, both slashers and giallos have gore, but the giallos put a lot more emphasis on the creepy part leading up to the gore. Remember the image I showed at the start of the, this thing with the doll coming into the deep red scene? You didn't actually see the gory. There was a gory part came in after that, but the emphasis, no one remembers the gore part. You remember, oh my gosh, this doll. The gore in a giallo is the climax of the scene, The right? It's not the purpose of the scene. It's not the, the main thing about it. Another reason that slashers are looked down on is that they're really cheap to make, and they're super profitable. So a lot of really terrible filmmakers would do one because it's like, hey, it's cheap, it makes money, let's do a slasher. Now, giallos are cheap too because it's just people and special effects, but there is a perceived standard with giallos. People will look down and sneer at giallo if it's not artistic or skilled. So if you're a bad filmmaker, usually you won't do a giallo in the first place. You'll just do a slasher. Makes the same money, people to make fun of you, people will see your slasher whether or not it's good. So, you know, now there's an exception. There's like artsy directors or egotistical directors that think they can make a great giallo and can't, but this is true of every genre. Some differences, obviously the idea in the slasher movie is that the killer is supposed to be insane, but they don't usually act insane. I mean, like, is, is Jason insane? I guess he doesn't talk, so maybe, but he doesn't seem like dysfunctionally insane. He's just like a killing machine. In a giallo, usually the killer seems insane. Like in uh, Deep Red, the killer, to work himself up to the killing frenzy, can't just go do it. He plays this tape of this little children's song, you know, where the little kids are singing on this cassette tape. And so when you hear the tape playing, you know the killer is somewhere around working himself up to kill you. So it's pretty scary. You know, you're like, because this killer is a bad guy. And so you hear the, the song, you know, the killer's around. Where is he? Where is he going to come? It's a it's an interesting uh, thing. But he also seems insane. He'll he'll uh, say things or do things that seem crazy. Another difference is that in slashers, and one of the reasons the slasher killers don't seem insane, just like a natural force, is because the murders 
don't have a purpose. They're just because someone's there or maybe because the killer had a bad childhood, okay? Why does Jason kill? Who cares? He just does. But in the Giallo, the killer always has a reason behind his murders. A sensible one. For example, in Deep Red, which I mentioned earlier, what happens is that uh, the hero uh, sees a, a killing by the by the killer. He doesn't see the killer, just the the murder, and so the, and then the hero starts to research the backdrop of of what, who the killer could be. So the killer in Deep Red, starts going back through his own history, killing all the people and places, uh, people in the places that might lead the hero to him. So he's erasing his history. It, it's sensible. It makes sense. They're killing you for a reason. Now, the killer is killing to solve his problems because he's insane, right? But, uh, but he is solving a problem. Now, in a slasher movie, you go there because you want to see dead teenagers. You know, nothing wrong with dead teenagers. But in a giallo, he is actually killing people that usually you want to have survive. They have information you want. They're someone likable. They're someone that you care about, at least in some ways. So you're like, no, don't kill him. And then he kills him. Another difference in a slasher movie, it's not that big a deal who the killer is. Often you know who the killer is in the very opening scene. Sometimes there's a tiny twist. Oh, it's so-and-so. Big deal. In a giallo, you never know who the killer is. It's always a big, weird twist. Okay, you're expecting a twist. Um, in a lot of movies, if I tell them, hey, there's a plot twist, then when you go to see the movie, you'll say, just knowing there's a plot twist lets you figure out the twist. That's not what it is in giallos. You go in there knowing there's a twist, and it's usually impressive. But slashers don't have these twists because you're not in a slasher movie to be surprised, okay? So, for example, uh, there's a film Tenebrae, which I also really like, also by Dario Argento. And in this film, the killer is killed himself, like, halfway through the film. But then the killings keep going, so you're like, who is killing people now? And it's like, is someone dead who wasn't supposed to be? Or someone alive? Is also, what's, what's going on? How are the killings still happening when the killer died? Then you have to figure out what's going on, where the kill, right? The, did we not kill the killer? It's an interesting, and the twist is pretty great. Um, so, Giallo's pretty much died out in the 1990s. So there's been a little bit of resurgence. Essentially, the Italian film industry collapsed in the late 90s, and that pretty much put paid to Giallo's because they mostly came from uh, Italy. Now, there's other ways that Giallo are distinctive that has nothing to do with how they're done. I can't offhand think of any Giallo's that are sequels where slashers like really suffer from sequelitis. <laughs> like Bird with the Crystal Plumage, one of the earliest giallos, is fabulous. There's only one, though. But even the terrible series of slasher movies, Silent Night, Deadly Night, has five different versions, one through five. Ugh. Now, although I do remember watching Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, oddly enough, it's actually not a slasher. It's like a cool horror movie by Brian Yesna with bugs and, like, uh, women empowerment and stuff. Anyway, that's just how weird slashers are. Also, I'll mention that in the Halloween series... One of the movies, Halloween 3, isn't about slashers, doesn't have Michael Myers, it's like a, a different plot, so I love Halloween 3. But Now, giallos are not anti-supernatural, but the supernatural is not the main thrust of the tale. There could be, like, for example, Deep Red, the one I mentioned earlier, there is a supernatural bit because um, the, way, the reason that the killer kills at the start of the movie, putting the hero hip to the villain doing something, is that a psychic is doing a demonstration in an auditorium, and she reads the mind of one of the audience and says, you have killed before and you will kill again. And she's like, and so the killer kills her. So she doesn't say who he is. And then he sees that killing. So there's a supernatural element. Also, they can be Satanists or something, but it's not primarily supernatural. Um, of course, slashers are usually not supernatural too, except for ones like Nightmare on Elm Street, but there it is. So if you're curious about giallos, which are one of my very favorite genres myself, so at least I can recommend them, I'm going to talk about uh, the following giallos, which are a good, fun place to start. So the first one, this is Blood and Black Lace. This is one of the most beautifully filmed movies ever, and it's by Mario Bava. It's the first strong giallo, and just everything about this is great. It's got great acting, it's got amazing scenery and colors, and uh, and evil killers that you're trying, that you wish weren't doing it. So there's that one. Blood and Black Lace, recommended highly. All these I recommend highly, so I guess I don't want to say that. Okay, now on to Deep Red. I've already talked about Deep Red. Now, Deep Red's one drawback is that it's two and a half hours long. It doesn't feel that long when you're watching it. It doesn't drag, 
Okay, like for example, the new um, Hobbit movies to me kind of drag. Deep Red doesn't ever drag, but if you don't have if you don't budget for two and a half hours, you may want to skip Deep Red. Short Night of the Glass Dolls. This movie starts very, is very interesting because it starts off with the hero on an autopsy table. They're about to dissect him. He is awake and alert, but but paralyzed, and he's trying to remember how he got there before he's autopsied. And the, so, like the whole movie is a flashback. Um, and I won't tell you if he gets away or not, but it, I'll just say that in the Giallo, uh, there's not necessarily a happy ending. Dressed to Kill. This is actually not Italian. This is a Brian De Palma movie because he liked Giallos, and he made this awesome Giallo called Dressed to Kill, which. Uh, I will say has giallo, it's not maybe a real giallo solidly through, but it gives um, homage to giallos. And so it's cool on that basis. You know, the killer wears black gloves. That's a very giallo thing. Um, the cops are useless. That's a very giallo thing. Um, so we'll go on there. Okay, Stage Fright. This is one of the uh, the, the later uh, giallos by uh, Michael Suave. I really like it a lot. You can see there's the guy in the owl mask and one of the cool things is there's a, a group of people doing a play about a serial killer and an actual insane serial killer escapes prison and breaks into the theater and he puts on the owl mask that the serial killer wears in the play and it takes him a while to figure out that this one guy wearing the owl mask isn't their fellow actor but the serial killer and it's pretty funny though because the serial killer like acts like he put on the owl mask to hide himself so like there's scenes where they're trying to get him to do the the acting thing and he doesn't know what to do because like he doesn't he doesn't read the play before it's pretty it's it's i liked it a lot i think you would too Okay, this next movie was called in Italian, Don't Torture Donald Duck. Um, or Don't Hurt Donald Duck. But in English, they couldn't call it that because Disney. So it's called Don't Torture a Duckling. And it's really interesting. And one of the things that's cool about it is that there is kind of a clash between the um, conservative religious people and the non-conservative, uh, like lack of morals people and the children are caught in the middle. And and the reason that they're being killed is, is, is pretty twisted. And uh, it's one of... Uh, Lucio Fulci's uh, few giallos, and he got a lot of uh, flack for doing this one, but I liked it, and uh, it'll just let him try it out. So, next, Tenebre. I mentioned it earlier. It's the one that has the uh, the weird thing where the killer dies halfway through. It also has uh, the best ending. I can remember in any movie ever from the moment the axe comes through the window for the whole like for 15 20 minutes it's just twist and turn after twist it's and the fact that it starts with an axe coming through a window right there it's cool right it is a great great ending uh like i said the best of any ending i've seen okay the house with laughing windows this is a Another twisted uh, thing. It features very strongly the, the theme of Giallo's that the bad guy doesn't isn't just like an insane killer, but an insane sick killer who's kind of repulsive in some ways, and uh, not physically but morally. And this really shows that. And uh, half the movie they haven't found the house. They're looking for the house with with the windows that laugh. Uh, you know, so when they do, then it, it's like. The killer isn't in the house. It's just like the house is a key. That all the jellos are about investigation with murders on the side. So there it is. Okay, here's a really, really recent one. Uh, and in a sense, it's not a giallo, but it's, it couldn't exist without giallos. And it's called Barbarian Sound Studios. That's not Barbarian, but Barbarian. And uh, what's going on here is the sound engineer is hired <coughs> to um, to do the sound effects for a giallo and as he's g g starts getting into the giallo and watching it he starts like having mental problems and the and it's a really weird movie when i first watched it i wasn't sure if i liked it the second time i watched it i was pretty sure i liked it haven't watched it a third time yet but it's so interestingly filmed and such an interesting plot i think i gotta recommend it 
Okay, the last one, I'm gonna, I did 10. The last one here is non hosano, which means sleepless in English. Sometimes you find it under the title sleepless. This is a fabulous, fabulous giallo. It has Max von Sydow. It's got a killer dwarf. It's got a, a poem, a weird poem that the, the bad guy uses. It's got twist after twist. Again, if it's a very solid giallo right in the, right in the middle of the pack as far as giallo themes, but at the very top end for being a great giallo. So if you haven't heard of Giallos before, you are in for a treat. I envy you because you're going to get to see some really cool movies. And if you have heard of Giallos, maybe I came up with something new for you to think about, a movie you hadn't seen that, you're, that you might want to, or a different way of looking at them. So thanks.